Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So, when it comes to Playtest 7, people are pretty excited about the Warlock, and specifically, they're pretty excited about Pact of the Blade because it looks super cool. Now, when I read Pact of the Blade, and I read Thirsting Blade, and I read Life Drinker, I am a little concerned it kind of feels overtuned. And I'm going to be doing a full video on the Warlock that I plan to release this Friday. But I wanted to do a little half video today where I just kind of discuss Pack to the Blade and take a look at the numbers. So I want to demonstrate my concerns with Pack to the Blade. So I did some damage calculations for other playtest classes at level 13. Some of those numbers probably need adjusted somewhat with the new versions of Fighter and Barbarian, but I don't think they're going to change dramatically. So I wanted to see how a 13th level Warlock shapes up, and I'm not going to worry about subclass at all here, so put whatever Warlock subclass you want on there, you put Genie Patron or something, the damage numbers go up, but I don't think we need it. So when it comes to the species, doesn't matter what you select, no matter what you select, you're going to get a plus 2 modifier and a plus 1 modifier that you can put where you want, and I would probably recommend plus 2 to Charisma and plus 1 to Constitution. I'm also going to recommend that we probably should have a strength of 13 and a dexterity of at least 13. I'm going to use 14. But this opens up ranged heavy weapons and melee heavy weapons because the new heavy property requires that we have a 13 strength to use a melee heavy weapon or a 13 dexterity to use a ranged heavy weapon without having disadvantage. So this is going to be new for Blade Pact Warlocks. Uh, normally if you were like Hexblade or something, then you would use your Charisma modifier for attack and damage rolls, and you could dump your strength and use a great sword. Can't dump your strength anymore if you want to use those heavy weapons. As our first level feat, I would recommend Lightly Armored. This is going to give us medium armor proficiency, and we can throw on Half Plate. If you want to do Sword and Board, you can use a shield as well. For this demonstration, I'm going to assume we're going to use two-handed weapons. At 4th level, Warcaster would give us advantage on concentration saving throws due to damage. Gives us also nice options for opportunity attacks and raises our charisma up to 18. So that's the way I would go. At 8th level, probably just get my charisma up to 20. And at 12th, uh, I guess grab Great Weapon Master. This increases our strength to 14. Uh, I don't know if that gives us any advantage, but why not? It gives us a bonus action attack with a melee weapon if we score a critical, or we drop an enemy to zero hit points, and it allows us to add our proficiency bonus to damage once on our turn if we're attacking with a heavy weapon. Okay, what invocations to take? Well, we're going to have eight invocations at level 13, so we want Pack to the Blade for all that stuff, right? We can use our Charisma modifier for attack and damage rolls, that's plus five. We're going to be able to modify our damage types as we want to, and we can create a weapon as a bonus action, whatever melee weapon we want. But if we want to bond a ranged weapon, we can only do it by bonding a magical ranged weapon. Thirsting Blade we want to take. That's going to give us three attacks with the attack action at level 11. Then Life Drinker will give us an extra d6 damage and the healing option. And then we're going to take Eldritch Smite because... You know, maybe we crit, and we're going to have three pack slots. So that's 12d8 extra damage on a crit. So that's probably worth one of those spell slots once in a while if we crit. And then Otherworldly Leap because it's 20 feet of extra movement. And that's five invocations, so we're going to have three more. I don't know, maybe we take Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast, and maybe, you know, Tough or Alert or something like that doesn't matter. Okay, so let's start with melee. We want a heavy weapon, and I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to take a great sword. This gives us the graze mastery, so if we miss, we deliver our charisma modifier and damage anyways, so 5. And our base weapon damage is 2d6. So, on round 1, it is time to use our bonus action, and we'll spend one of those three pack slots on a 5th level spirit shroud. Upcast to 5th level, that gives us 2d8 additional damage to our attacks, and then we're going to close to melee. 
Assuming we have a 60% chance to hit, here's what we would have. Attack 1, we have 2d6 plus 5 base weapon damage, another d6 from Life Drinker, another 2d8 from the Spirit Shroud, and that's 24.5 damage on average. With a 60% chance to hit, times 24.5, that's 14.7 base damage. Then if we miss, we do 5 damage because of Graze, and 40% chance times 5, that's 2. And then there's the chance we'll crit, and we have a 5% chance to crit, and the extra damage we would deliver, assuming we would do an Eldritch Smite if we happen to crit, that would be 73.5 additional damage, or increases our average damage by 3.68. That means each attack we do does an average damage of 20.38. Then we have attack number 2, average damage 20.38. And then attack number 3, average damage 20.38. Then we have Great Weapon Master. This allows us to apply our proficiency bonus to damage once on our turn if we hit. Our chance of hitting at least once with those three attacks, 94%. So 94% times 5 additional damage is another 4.7. So we add that on. So we have 20.38 plus 20.38 plus 20.38 plus 4.7. That is 65.84 DPR. So let's see how that looks on our chart. Well, this is the chart that includes the Berserker Barbarian, the Beastmaster Ranger, the Champion Fighter, the Assassin Rogue, and the Devotion Paladin. The Blade Pact Warlock, I can't put it on here because it's off the charts. Easily out damaging everything else, and honestly, I'm not shocked. It is 147% over baseline damage, which is a Warlock using Eldritch Blast and Agonizing Blast and Hex. Why would you ever do that with this Pact of the Blade option? I guess if you wanted to do range combat instead of melee combat. But here's the question. If you don't want to go into melee, is Eldritch Blast still your best option? Let's see. Let's assume this same character found a magic longbow and bonded it. We're going to forget about any magical bonuses. They don't belong here. But maybe it's a moon-touched longbow or something. So there's no advantage in terms of chance to hit or damage or anything like that. Are we better off using Eldritch Blast or this Longbow? Well, Spirit Shroud requires that we get in close, so we're not going to use that. And I don't think we'll overthink it. We'll just use Hex. I think that actually gives us the best comparison against Eldritch Blast plus Hex. And we're not going to have Graze this time. We have the Slow Mastery. Well, Slow Mastery isn't going to affect damage. Obviously, there's a control aspect. Though, if we're using Eldritch Blast, there's probably going to be a control aspect there as well. So, attack number one. Longbows do a D8 damage, plus 5 from our Charisma. D6 from Life Drinker. A D6 from Hex. That's 16.5 base damage. 60% chance to hit times 16.5 equals 9.9 .9 average damage on a hit. Then we have 5% chance to crit, and that would increase our damage by 89.5 on average, or 4.48. So we're doing 14.38 per attack. And yes, we will still add the Great Weapon Master extra damage. Here it is. When you hit a creature with a heavy weapon, well, Longbow is a heavy weapon. On your turn, you can cause the weapon to deal extra damage to the target. So Longbow works with Great Weapon Master now. 94% chance of hitting at least once, times 5 is another 4.7, uh, the same as it was in melee. So we have 14.38 plus 14.38 plus 14.38 plus 4.7 is 47.84. So that is a 79% increase to damage over using Eldritch Blast. However, you are potentially using more spell slots because of Eldritch Smite. So let's assume we don't take Eldritch Smite at all. Is it still better? Well, 5% chance times 12.5 is 0.63. So that's our new added critical damage. So that's 10.53 per attack or 36.59. That is still a 37% increase over Eldritch Blast damage. Except we're slowing rather than pushing. Now this does cost us extra invocations. Just not as many as you might think, because we are taking Pact of the Blade, and we're taking Thirsting Blade, and we're taking Life Drinker. 
But we're saving Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast, so we're really only spending one additional invocation for a 37% increase to damage. That seems like a really good deal to me. And a longbow has more range than Eldritch Blast as well. So this version of Pact of the Blade is kind of making Eldritch Blast obsolete. Uh, and I think it's doing a lot more than that. I just can't imagine this surviving the playtest. So if you want to try this out, you should probably set that up before it gets rebalanced. Because this version of Pact of the Blade actually makes all other weapon users obsolete. It's not just a case of Pact of the Blade Warlock doing more damage, because that is just one metric, but it's everything added together. I mean, number one, Pact of the Blade Warlock does outdamage other weapon users by a significant margin, and I didn't even add in potential boosts through subclasses or bonus action attacks gained through Heavy Weapon Master, because it was just unnecessary. Also, unlike the subclasses you see on this chart, the Pact of the Blade Warlock can choose between four damage types, and it can switch them out with each attack if they want. Speaking of bonus actions, the damages you see on this chart all required using bonus actions every round. Not Pact of the Blade Warlock though. Round 1, Spirit Shroud, then bonus actions can be used for other things on subsequent rounds. Number 4, the Pact of the Blade is also faster than any of these options because of Otherworldly Leap providing unlimited jump spells. That's basically 20 feet of extra movement which is equivalent to a monk at this level. And number five, this build didn't even use all its available invocations. So it could use lessons of the first ones to access feats without prerequisites, and that invocation can be selected multiple times. So we can add tough, so we'll have hit points equivalent to a barbarian, and let's add lucky, and let's add alert, so we're always winning initiative. And number six, we're not limited to melee or ranged, with this same build, one bonus action, and we can switch between ranged and melee, and we're good at both of them. And number seven, this build can access any weapon mastery in the game. Now, fighters can too, but not with a bonus action. So mid-combat, we suddenly see use for topple. Well, we can just have topple. Then next round, we want push. Well, we got it. And next round, we want graze. We have that. There's no significant loss in damage for doing it. And eight, unlike most of these options, the Pact of the Blade Warlock also has a no action in combat healing through Life Drinker. And number nine, that doesn't even account for the fact that this is a spellcaster that's eventually going to have ninth level spells. So in conclusion, it's overtuned. In Playtest 5, it was probably undertuned. So there's got to be a happy medium in there somewhere. Like, maybe Life Drinker should require level 11 and Thirsting Blade shouldn't scale at level 11. And I do expect there's going to be rebalancing before this playtest is over, so I'm not too concerned. And like I said, if you want to be the best weapon user in the game, take your chance now. But when it comes time to fill in your surveys, just be aware that this is too powerful and needs to be redesigned a bit. Anyways, thought I'd let you guys know about this issue before I get into my deep dive into Warlock on Friday. Hope you'll join me for that video. Otherwise, until then, I am going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. I am able to do this full-time thanks to the patrons on Patreon who support this channel. Thank you to all of you. But I also want to specifically point out my Archmage level patrons today. Aaron Kaler, Aiden Potter, Awesome Face, Benjamin, Brett McDowell, Dash Panther, Dave Peters, David Lotz, David W. Skibbins, Gakumaru, Ian Johnson, Isaac Leister. Hey, thanks for joining my Archmage patrons. James Thomas, John Cripps, Jonathan Lexi, Kevin Casey, Kurt G, Cavathe, Leonardo Gonzalez, Marlon Rooks, Migish, Nick Simmons, Raisquai, Sad Keone 7, Steven Edmondson, and TUM. Thank you all so much for supporting me. If anyone watching would like to join my Patreon, there is a link in the video description. Talk to y'all on Friday.